previously on Beyond the Horizon. Good morning and welcome to day nine of our trip. We begin our day today by first checking out one of the highlights of Great Basin National Park. That is the Wheeler Peak Scenic Drive. A true mountain road, this 12 mile out and back scenic drive hugs the mountains of the South Snake Range. By slowly winding you over 10,000 feet in elevation where vistas reach the horizon, one is met with a pristine view of the rugged and harsh yet beautiful Great Basin Desert, and of course, Wheeler Peak. Well, good morning, everybody. We are starting today off with a awesome little hike here, uh, the Alpine Lakes Loop Trail. It's not very long, less than three miles, but it leads to some beautiful views but it's incredible at 10,000 feet. We're still coming out of winter here with snow all over the place, big patches of it that are kind of leading astray as far as the trail goes. So we'll have to be cautious with that, but it's gonna be beautiful. It's a perfect temperature out here and just amazing views. I think Great Basin is definitely an underrated national park. It's very, very beautiful up here. So awesome way to start today, but let's see where the trail goes. I know I'm not in the best shape in my entire life, but I tell you what, we've only gained about 250 feet in elevation, but being at 10,000 feet high, the air being so much thinner, whew, sucking oxygen here. <laughs> So welcome to Stella Lake. How incredible is this? We practically have the whole place to ourselves. There's no one up here. We had lunch. We're enjoying the views. The weather is perfect. I get hot in the summer, so I don't usually like doing too many hikes. It gets hot whenever. And then it gets too cold, so when you stop and all your perspiration freezes over, so there's that. But this is like just right. It's beautiful. This is nice. So we're gonna go to the next one. Teresa Lake, I think is what it's called. Yeah. And, uh, See how out of breath we can get for that one. <laughs> 10,500 feet, here we are. Whenever we're out on extended trips, we get a little stir crazy with how much time we spend in and around the car. So stretching the legs and taking on hikes such as this is always a treat. Add in perfect weather and views like these, say no more. Go ahead and count me in. So I gotta be honest with you, this next part uh, completely caught us off guard. I'll pose the question now. Have any of you heard of Mormon crickets? Well, neither did we until driving to our next destination in northern Nevada. Let me tell you when I say these things are absolutely nasty. We essentially drove through an outbreak in which we encountered millions flooding the highway as they thrive in this natural landscape 
and feed on the local agriculture, including their very own in a form of cannibalism. Aside from the horrible smell as vehicles drove over them, I later found out how truly difficult it was washing off the aftermath from my Jeep. Needless to say, Shelby was a little apprehensive on camping tonight, but to be honest, a hot shower and a comfy bed didn't sound too bad either. Well, alrighty folks, after a very long drive, at least what it felt like today, from Great Basin National Park all the way here in uh, Elko, Nevada. Um, the reason why we're here is we wanted to explore the Ruby Mountain area, and uh, little did we know, Nevada had an interesting thing on the highways today. Um, it even made news. It says, State of Nevada preps response to swarms of Mormon crickets expected this summer. It literally made a news article. <laughs> so, for those of you not familiar with them, they're about a two inch cricket <laughs> that literally overtakes everywhere they go. And it infests farmers' crops and all these different areas. And when we were driving on the highway today, I kid you not, it literally turned the road red with the number of vehicles and semi-trucks and all that kind of stuff driving over them. Uh, got some footage, <laughs> a little bit if you will, for those squeamish, you might look away, but it uh, was an interesting thing. And uh, Shelby was not game to do any more camping outside, especially with uh, all the forest roads literally being overtaken by these things. So with that said, we're here. We're at a nice little hotel. We splurged for the night. Yep, hardcore overlanding. Um, but honestly, this gives me a chance, gives both of us a chance to kind of reset, um, take advantage of charging all my electronics, including the power station that is mission critical, not only for the fridge, but all my camera gear. Uh, but also get a really good night's rest, get a hot shower, might even shave my head, starting to grow hair again, and just really just hit the reset button since we're about uh, a little halfway through our trip now and we're going to be doing majority of camping through on out until we're back home but yeah interesting who would have thought uh mormon crickets taking over this northern part of I uh, nevada so super crazy but here we are and uh enjoying a little bit of indoor comfort today so looking forward to tomorrow and exploring the ruby mountains so let's see what that brings With a critter-free night's sleep, we started the day exploring the scenery of the Ruby Mountains. Situated in northeastern Nevada, near the state's border with Utah, the Ruby Mountains are a crescent-shaped range that extend for approximately 80 miles. These mountains are part of the Great Basin Ranges, which more or less cover the entirety of the state. As a result, the range is surrounded by an alternating pattern of valleys and mountain chains on all sides. Here you will find 26 peaks with the highest and most prominent being the Ruby Dome, standing at over 11,000 feet. So the Ruby Mountains are absolutely incredible. This drive, while well, the uh, scenic drive in was rather short. The views here in this canyon are incredible and it's all national forest land and on our way back out we're exploring some of the side roads off the main scenic drive and finding future campsite opportunities. Uh, but yeah, check this out.
covering about 84 square miles and at an elevation of 4,000 feet, the Alvar Desert was once home to a lake thousands of years ago. This destination has been on my list for quite some time and the trek back home in Oregon provided the perfect opportunity to finally experience it. Good morning from the Alvar Desert. What an incredible sunrise we got to experience this morning. Um, we haven't experienced too many sunrises because we're usually up very late, which requires us to sleep in. Uh, but this morning, the colors are just amazing. It's just in such an incredible landscape and we've witnessed so many diverse type of landscapes on this trip so far. Uh, but being out here for the first time has been absolutely stunning. I will say the bugs last night were horrendous, uh, basically resulting in us to just hunker down in the Jeep and go to bed pretty early. Uh, but otherwise, it's a, it's an incredible spot. Very, very remote. Um, and gas is definitely one where they take advantage of you. A little expensive at some of the uh, stops here along the way because you're so far out here. But I will say it's well worth all those little obstacles and challenges to come out here and at least experience it for, for one. Uh, but otherwise, you couldn't ask for better conditions. The playa out here is perfectly dry um, and it's very easy to drive on. But I'll tell you what, what a start to the day. Alrighty, so I don't think I've ever been this low on gas driving ever, <laughs> but using the e-save mode on the Jeep, basically it only uses fuel, not anything to do with the electric battery. Um, we made it, we made it in the town of Burns and we're going to fill up on gas because we absolutely need it. <laughs> we did it. And she took a nap while we were getting, getting nervous. Oh, I pulled into gas stations at zero. <laughs> Here we go. After the much needed top off, we grabbed a quick bite to top off ourselves and get some work done on the computer before heading out and making our way to the Painted Hills in John Day River area. With it being later in the day and the heat of the sun beating down on us, we saved exploring the Painted Hills for tomorrow and instead went on to search for camp and relax. Little did we know we'd be finding our own oasis right on the river. So we made it back into Oregon and we are at the Painted Hills area and it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 92 degrees, very warm <laughs> and we're at least just wanting to scout out some campsites while we have daylight and uh, go and check out the hills a little bit later this afternoon. But here along the John Day River, 
there is a plethora of opportunities and a few of them are right here along the waterfront which is super nice so i think we're going to go explore around a little bit more i got my hat on we, my sun hat we both got our sun hats especially when you're bald you need helps it helps my delicate pale skin yeah michael keeps reminding me mom you'd be proud yep we, <laughs> we kind of do all that <laughs> stuff and uh explore check out future campsites and current campsite opportunities painted hills come back enjoy a great evening because tomorrow we head further north to the Mount Hood area and then home. It's crazy. The trip is already slowly coming to a conclusion. But here we go. Cheers everybody. I might have lied just a little bit saying that we're gonna go back to the Painted Hills before finding camp. Uh, we went down the road just a little bit further paralleling the John Day River here and found a beautiful secluded camp here uh, underneath this tree canopy keeping us nice and shaded and literally just a foot or so right in front of the river. So needless to say we snagged this one to ensure we got it for tonight and are enjoying the shade here on this hot summer day. Yeah. So Super nice. It's nice. We'll see the Painted Hills tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll go see the Painted Hills tomorrow before ripping further north towards Mount Hood. Uh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> cheers. What more could you ask for? So tonight we're having a barbecue pulled pork and mac and cheese. It's super easy, just hickory, barbecue, mac and cheese, pulled pork from Trader Joe's, and we got some little barbecues from McDonald's. Super simple.
As we made our way closer to home, so did the realization of our trip coming to an end. After about two weeks on the road, we have one final night planned for camping in the somewhat familiar area around Mount Hood. So with the beautiful weather still on our side, we pushed on to see what we could find for calling home for the night. We found an incredible spot here in uh, Mount Hood National Forest with a stunning view of Mount Hood itself. And uh, we have this break in the tree line here where we do have that view, but the sun is just so hot and warm here in the afternoon that we put the front wall up on the Kakadu awning just to help block that. So uh, we just need a little relief from the sun. Uh, there's really not much of a breeze, but Later tonight when it drops for sunset, it should be really good. But uh, what a incredible campsite to just round out this whole trip of having the view of the mountain here in all its glory. So absolutely love it. While the spot was perfect in nearly every way, one thing we didn't love was the continuation of being eaten alive by the bugs. Not sure why they were so interested in us, but between the heat of the day and that, we decided to take refuge back in the Jeep turn the AC on, and kill some time until sunset with a few games of Farkle. All part of the adventure, but I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. Well guys, cheers to an incredible trip. It's been nearly two weeks of living out of the Jeep and it's been amazing to see such a diverse landscape and terrain that we've done. Everything from the Salt Flats in Utah to the Alfred Desert in Oregon. You know, what else? Uh, kayak, the Blue Heart Springs um, in Idaho. We were at the Painted Hills in Oregon. Yeah. Um, we went through snow, 91 degree weather, uh, all over the place all of it and uh, it's been absolutely amazing and it's it's incredible to think that this was just two weeks it's it's hard to imagine that night one it feels so long ago because just go, going through all the footage and photos and everything it's just insane to think that that was just you know all of you know 10 days ago so uh, awesome awesome time on the road I'm so excited to put this series together as I'm filming this now but uh, really just goes to show that even in familiar areas and brand new ones that uh, you can uncover so much and you don't have to travel too terribly far to do it. Uh, but I'm so excited to put this series together and as always, I sincerely appreciate all your guys' support and uh, encouragement. It's the inspiration that keeps me going and uh, I couldn't be more honored to have you guys as part of this awesome community. So with that, as always, I sincerely appreciate your support. And until next time, safe travels.